Imagine machines that could help trauma and stroke victims recover and walk again, or act as our personal home assistants, or help children with autism. Or imagine machines that look like humans, or maybe look more like our four-legged friends. They could maybe help you out around the home, do your dishes for you, fill that dishwasher for you, tidy up for you, maybe even do your recycling for you, all while you sit back and relax in your home. Because these machines don't need looking after. They can look after themselves. They can help you out in any, any room in your home, on any floor. Stairs are no problem to these machines. Imagine a machine that could help set up a home for humans on another planet. This is Valkyrie. She has not been designed for this world. She has been designed to try and help set up a home for humans on Mars. Now, she's got a lot to learn at the moment. She's just like a toddler, so there are literally a few tumbles along the way. But she will learn. She will hopefully go to the International Space Station and work with humans and learn from those humans. And she'll learn very, very quickly. Another great example of machine learning, because these ones have to be trained. And once they're trained, they're able to answer both complex problems and create solutions to both programmed and unprogrammed questions. So another great example of this is IBM's Watson for Ornacology. Now, Watson is the name of IBM's uh, machine learning engine. Now, Watson was trained by leading ornithologists from some of the world-leading cancer hospitals, <coughs> along with every textbook and scientific paper written on the subject, so some 25 million in total. It's capable of reading both structured and unstructured data, so things like uh, trial databases, as well as uh, doctors' handwritten notes and around 8,000 scientific journals every single day. In a study of 1,000 cancer patients, Watson was able to recommend the same treatment as the doctors in 99% of the cases. However, in 30% of the cases, Watson was able to recommend something better based on the scientific papers that the human counterparts hadn't yet had time to read. These are just some great examples of machines and humans working together, helping each other to try and solve some of the grand challenges that we all face. There are 14 world engineering grand challenges, and these include things like uh, enhancing virtual reality, and reverse engineering the brain, engineering better medicines, providing access to clean water for everyone, and the one that I work on, I work on engineering the tools for scientific discovery, and I use radio waves and some very smart machines to do this. One of those smart machines is something called the Square Kilometre Array, or the SKA. Now, the SKA is a radio telescope that's designed to work in Western Australia and in some remote areas in South Africa. Now, the sheer size of the SKA will make it 50 times more sensitive than any other radio instrument in the world ever. And that will allow us to answer key and ambitious questions in astrophysics, cosmology, and fundamental physics. In fact, the SKA will be so sensitive, it will be able to detect an airport radar-like signal on a planet 10 light years away. And the amount of data this thing will generate is enormous. It's estimated that these dishes alone will generate more than 10 times the global internet traffic. 10 times the global internet traffic. If you could take the SKA data taken in one day and download it as a song and play that song, that song would last for two million years. The high-performance central computer will need to perform 10 to the 15 calculations every single second. Images of one terabyte will need to be transferred around the world every single minute. 
This indeed is a smart machine measuring the universe and generating huge amounts of data. And data is such an important commodity right now. It's being mined like coal. It's being refined like crude oil. It's being stored in high security vaults like gold. And it's being sold like rolled steel. But what is data? Well, at the fundamental level, all information is digital, consisting of a series of ones and zeros. But the information content of any, any physical system in bits must be limited, and that's known as something called a Bekenstein bound. So in other words, if a system's mass, energy, and dimensions are known, the Bekenstein bound will allow us to calculate the number of bits required to recreate any system perfectly, right down to the quantum level. So if that's true, can we represent the total information content of the brain, the human brain, in bits? It's a physical system, after all. The total information content of the human brain in bits is a very big number. It's around 2.6 times 10 to the 42 bits. In other words, if you could take the information content of the brain and download it as a song and play that song, that song would last for 50,000 trillion trillion years. What's the most complex object in the universe? The brain. Imagine machines that could think like humans. I don't just mean from a logical perspective, but ones that were capable of emotion and empathy. They'd have to be able to learn for themselves. Valkyrie, the humanoid robot going to Mars, she has to learn for herself. And she has got a lot to learn, but she will learn, and she'll learn very quickly, much more quickly than humans. And that's what machines are very, very good at. DeepMind's AlphaGo is a great example of machine learning. AlphaGo is the name of uh, DeepMind's machine learning engine. And AlphaGo has been designed to play the game Go. Now, the game Go is thought to have originated in ancient China some two and a half thousand years ago. And so it's thought to be the oldest board game still played today. Now, despite its relatively simple rules, Go is actually a very, very complicated game to play, much more complex than chess. And AlphaGo's, DeepMind's AlphaGo's latest machine learning engine is a very, very smart machine indeed. AlphaGo Zero was able to learn the game Go to an expert level in just 40 days by removing human data, by removing human expertise in any fashion, the creators were able to remove the constraints of human knowledge. AlphaGo Zero creates knowledge for itself, from first principles, from a blank slate. And that allows it to be much more powerful than any other machine before it. Now, despite how impressive that is, and it is extremely impressive, AlphaGo Zero can currently only do one thing. It can play Go, it can't even play chess. But in the coming decades, these machines are getting smarter and smarter, and will play a bigger and bigger role in our society. And they will fail along the way. But that's OK, because we as humans fail along the way too. And not only is it okay that humans fail along the way, we should fail along the way, we must fail along the way, because we have to get out of our comfort zones. And the reason we have to get out of our comfort zones is that's where the magic happens. You have to fail, you must fail in everything you do, please fail, it's a great thing, and celebrate those failures, they are fantastic, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I fail all the time in my research, and hopefully that's not because I'm a bad researcher. It's because I'm trying to push the boundaries. I'm trying to innovate in what I'm doing. And in order to innovate, I must fail. I must get out of my comfort zones. I must fail and learn from those failures. We should all learn from those failures. If we are to solve some of the biggest challenges that we all face, we must get out of our comfort zones and we must fail and learn from those failures. So what's next for machines and humans? 
machines that look like humans, machines and humans on another planet, robots that think like us, robots that take our jobs, machines that could love the way I love my daughter. What does the future hold? Who knows? Well, actually, no, that's not a statement. That's a question. Who knows? And the answer is you. You know. You might not know it yet, but it's in there. It's in the most complex object in the universe. And it's just waiting for you to fulfill your potential, to discover and create that next human-machine collaboration that changes the world. Thank you very much.